the Scottish Football Podcast from BBC Radio Scotland. Hello and welcome to the Scottish Football Podcast. It's Monday, August the 28th. I'm David Curry, and our special guest today is former Hibs, Rangers, Dundee and Scotland midfield player Kevin Thompson. Hello Kevin, trust you're well. Well, good, thanks. Thanks for having me on. I'll tell you what, plenty to talk about, including one of your former clubs, Hibs. But I think we'll start the news hot off the press, as we used to say in the old days of the week and the 150th anniversary game against England a few days later. The headline, the inclusion of 20-year-old Newcastle United midfielder Elliot Anderson, who, by the way, is also eligible for England. Here's what Scotland boss Steve Clark had to say about the call-up. Obviously, he's a good player. And he's, he's doing well for his club. Uh, Elliot's one has been through the, the underage groups in Scotland, one we've had an eye on. He had a, an inquiry, a little think about choosing between Scotland and England. Uh, some good discussions with the, the boy and his, his family. And he's chosen to come with us, which I think is good for us now and certainly good for us in the future. Yeah, he's been with us in general. Uh, obviously, when you get to... A certain stage of your career, and you, you can see your career's starting to take off, which Elliot says is at Newcastle. Uh, got some great reports from the people within the club at Newcastle, which is which is good to hear. Uh, and then you have to make that choice, you know. Elliot was, was born in England, he's, he's got decisions to make, and we're, we're just happy that he's come down on our side. So, Kevin, it looks like the, the good old Scots granny rule strikes again. Um, <laughs> Looks <laughs> like he's off the fence and in the Scotland squad. A few weeks ago, he was undecided, so he's been persuaded. Yeah, this great grand grandmother, great grandfather seems to pay dividends for us, Scott. So let's hope he's another good one. He's uh, I've only seen me glimpses. I've seen obviously come on yesterday. I watched the game yesterday, and obviously one of my good mates is a is a big Newcastle fan. So he's he's been telling me about this lad for a wee while. So let's hope he can um, he can continue to flourish, and and it looks like he's going to be a real fine. So let's let's hope he can. Um, he can prove to be a, a, a real good one for our national team. At 20 years old, in, he's made the kind of step from promising youth to what looks like he's going to be a first team, if not a first team regular, certainly part of the Eddie Howe rotation system there at St James's Park. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll get plenty of minutes. These you know, big squads in England have, have obviously won, when they want to challenge in all fronts, which Newcastle obviously are a club in the in the kind of transition with the with the, the monetary backing that they've had in, in recent terms. And obviously Eddie, you know, brilliant season last year, the, the expectation and the pressure grows and the money they've obviously spent as well grows as well. So it's I think for a young lad to to manage to muscle his way into a, a team or into a squad like Newcastle, and um, let's hope he can become a regular. But I think with the the um, the desire I would imagine internally for the club, the to kind of challenge in all fronts. Really, I'm not putting too much pressure on it. Win the Premier League, where obviously the, the Giants are in there, but I'm pretty sure they want to be competitive and, and try and get into the top four spaces. So that adds an extra game. Cup competitions add an extra game. So let, let's hope um, he can get exposed to as much first team football as, as possible, and that will hopefully then you know produce as a good player for the national team. We don't want a Declan Rice situation developing, uh, but he played for Ireland and. Uh, non-competitive games, so to speak, and then switched to England. So, w- with that in mind, would you anticipate he would he would get some game time against Cyprus? Yeah, I'd like to think so. He's, um, I'm pretty sure Steve's not. He doesn't seem the type. Um, how he's managed the squad, and he'll, he'll, I'm sure, know the logistics. He's obviously trying to get him capped up. I'm pretty sure they've had internal conversations that we've obviously not been privy to, but. I'm pretty sure, um, you know, to be in the full national squad, there's had, there's been that conversation that his his alliances are hopefully going to come to Scotland rather than, than obviously going to England, and I'm, I'm quite sure the SFA and, and Steve and his staff will be quite cute to know that they want to get him tied down as as as, quite as possible, really, so that we can uh, hopefully see him flourish and, and hopefully a, another one for the Tartan Army and, and our Scottish football fans to enjoy. Who do you think you'd fit in? I mean, we've got a pretty talented midfield as as it is. Well, I suppose listen, he's a young lad. What twenty years? Has he turned twenty-one years? He's still twenty. Now, um, twenty years of age. It's only just twenty-one really, in November, I think. Twenty-one in November. Only just starting to you know, break into the fringes, really. The, the Newcastle team and getting exposed to to that level, which can can only bode well for us, really. I, I think, as you mentioned, you you think of the some of the national heroes at the moment, Super John McGinn, um, you know, McTominay, as you 
listen, it's endless in there, Billy Gilmore's, Callum McGregor's, but the harsh reality is there will come a time that these boys end up at the tail end of that. Um, and the new the new pretenders need to come and try and stake a claim. So I think it bodes well for the competition within the squad. Um and also I think I think good for the young ones coming in and actually seeing what the what the standard is, the quality is, and it's up to them to try and surpass that or at least match that to try and put pressure on the boys that are already in the squad. So bodes well for Steve Clark and his staff. I think a competitive squad and a lot of players playing south of the border at the top level can can only um can only enhance really our national squad and, and, and make that edge, which I think is really important at the top edge at the top level, sorry. Um, to have that with a squad and a group of players that you know when you're turning it's not just a given that you're playing in the team and, and that can only be good for Steve and his, his staff I'll Tell you what, you mentioned players playing in the, the top league in England but we've now got players in Spain uh, Kieran Tierney, Italy Saudi Arabia even and if everyone's fit, no one has to pull out because of injury it's uh, it's, it's quite an impressive squad isn't it? Is it? All right, listen, I think it's as strong as it's ever been really, I think back to you know, when we were breaking through as young lads and we had like your Barry Ferguson's were at the forefront of that who, you know, unbelievable talent and in my opinion still one of the one of the best kind of Scottish players in the last few decades. The Darren Fletcher's, etc. you know, flying the flag obviously for, for United who were the, the dominant force at the time under Sir Alex. So I think when you look at the squad now and and, and how well the, the lads have of um you know carved good good careers for themselves and and, and not just making the numbers up in some of these leagues and, and some of these squads, you know, some of them are the, the good players within these squads. So John's obviously one of the the kind of the flag bearers for that. Um, you know, a brilliant season at Villa last year. He's he's, he's the fans' favourite. I think he's I think he'd won the, the national player of the year that many times now that he gets to keep the trophy. Um so it's <laughs> I think it can only be good for the for as I keep on mentioning, really, Steve and his staff, when you when you have so many good, talented players at your disposal, and and it and it enhances the kind of the challenge within the squad and the the, the kind of edge within the squad, and then you get the young pretenders coming along and, and ones that like a lot of people won't have heard of for for too much, and, and all of a sudden they come onto the scene. It's it's quite exciting to be honest, and it's it's I've got two young boys myself, and they're obviously love following the national team and, and got kind of heroes themselves, so it's. I suppose we're all in the same boat, and we just want to see the national team do well. And it's it's great that so many different players and and different talents are playing all across Europe. They they are young, uh, your young fellas. Are they Scotland fans? Are they Hibs fans, Kevin? We're Hibs fans, yeah. They're both season. So they both play for the Hibs Academy. So they're um, both season ticket holders as well, which breaks my heart a wee bit because they get free 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 tickets off the academy every week. But my kids being my kids, they want to be next to the ultras and they want to be next to the the kind of atmosphere, I suppose, on a Saturday. So, it's, um, listen, I was that kid myself one day that loved going to football and, and being in the hustle bustle. So, so, listen, they're just young footage fans, 11 and 13. They've, they've both got their own wee dreams and um, it's, it's great to to see, obviously, that they had heroes when I was growing up and, and now they've kind of got the same. So, it's, it's always nice. Lee Johnson, did you think, he, did he have to go? So I never like to see anyone lose their job, really, as a kind of fellow professional myself. So, it's, it's never nice to see Lee and his, his staff obviously move on. And I never really knew Maka that well. I played against him obviously a few times, but I knew Adam Owen really well. He was obviously our fitness coach at Rangers. So sad to see people lose their job because unfortunately it's just the nature of the beast. It's um it's just the way the game is, unfortunately. It's it's cutthroat at the top level and you and, and any team really, whether it's the Hybies or it's an R club, it's expect results. There's a demand and an expectation within the fan base and it's a results driven business, really. So you've got to understand the the kind of platform that you put yourself in as an individual that these things can happen. So one thing I would say is that they've um he has been well backed. He's he's I'm, I'm not so sure he could sit and have many excuses about um you know the, the the monetary value he's been been able to invest into the squad. He's had three transfer windows, he's had two pre seasons. Um and the and the club really are under pressure now to get it right because the, there is an expectation. There's, there's the same at the Jambos, you know, a lot of pals that are Go to Tynecast all the time. The massive club, social media is a huge part of society now. So everybody feels as though they've got opinion. The game's getting bigger and bigger. The national team's having success. It brings more, more scrutiny, more media attraction. And, and unfortunately, if you're not getting results, you come under the microscope and come under criticism. So I don't think you can have too much excuses regarding the the facilities that he had at East Mains are, are, are top drawer. The stadium, the fan base. Um, you know, it's a brilliant club, a brilliant city to stay in. So unfortunately, he's just come up a wee bit short, Lee Johnson. So, if you were a, a Hibs headhunter, Kevin, put yourself in that position. Who would you be? Who would you be looking at next? What type of um, 
boss to come in. I've scribbled down a few names here myself, but I like I like <laughs> let's see what 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 you think. Right, I, I probably would go, have a different view on it in the respect of um, I'm not so sure a name is that important to be honest. I, I think what Hibs, just my humble opinion, really need is that identity throughout the club. Really, do you know what I mean? It's it's changed. Unfortunately, you know the club lost a, a massive investor in Ron Gordon, obviously only last year. You know, condolences always to the family, and I, I know his son Ian's heavily involved. Ben Kenzel will come up with a big reputation for. It. Norwich and and the club has changed, but I, I would say that like the one thing I think and it, it, listen, somebody will probably quote me differently, but I think when you um, when you look at Hibs and, and and what Hibs fans expect and, and what they demand as a club and, and and how what type of style of football they want to play, I think you need to try and mar that and match that with with, with someone that's got the same expectations. I think the the club should be driven off youth. I think the academy should be flourishing. I think you know the monetary value south of the border to come and steal Scottish talent. I think the the the, the next person in charge should have a better plan in place that there's longevity there rather than short termism. I think the Hibs are the perfect club to have long long term values and, and long term goals. And I think the the academy should be aligned to that. And I think whichever manager, whichever name comes in, should should be looking to cast their eye within the academy and have a big, not a big say, because I know Gareth Evans really well, but I think they should have a, a big connection that, that that's aligned to make sure that there's one club and that the community straight through the academy, straight through the first team. Listen, I'm not naive. I understand that the fan wants to see a team that wins every single week and, and see the money spent every single season on first team players that can can be the next hero and the, and the tip of the tongue and, and make sure that the high bees are winning every week. But I, th- I think that short term um, view, view, in my opinion, I think for me, they should be looking at somewhere with someone where, where I'm not even so sure track record is the right word. I think someone with a, the right vision and the right identity to try and get the club back to. to I'm saying where it belongs. What where does it belong? The, the high expectation will be to try and get to third every season, try and be, be competitive with old firm. Um, obviously, want to beat their arch rivals and the jambos, and then they obviously have good runs in the in the cups. And, and ideally, when you're finishing third or fourth, or or sometimes with the um, with the other teams doing well, you might scrape into Europe, finishing f- um, fifth, obviously, season to season. So the, there's an expectation to try and get into Europe as well. But I don't think there's an expectation to win the league. I don't think there's an expectation to to, to win cups every season. But there's certainly an expectation to have a team that the club, the, the supporters can be proud of. And I think they, they need to get the right person that can bring the identity and the ethos back to, back to Easter Road. But shall I read you it, my wee list? I thought if I gave you a good answer, you might not need a email list. I've got to get yeah. I will listen. I've just scribbled down a few names here. So I've got Neil Lennon. You like this one, Scott Brown, <clears throat> and I'm, uh, this is painting me to say this one. Stephen Robinson, Derek McInnes, Malky Mackay. These are names that have kind of been mentioned. I heard um, Michael Stewart on Sports Scene yesterday throwing Robinson, McInnes, Mackay in there. They're all in jobs, obviously. And uh, at the end of the list there, I've got Kevin Thompson. Thought you might you had me at the top of the list. After that, well, I should have put you at the top. It's the, the harsh reality is the, the the job. I'm pretty sure a lot of people that are already in jobs will look at the high bees job and think that's a brilliant job. And um, sitting bottom of the league, there's some difficult run coming up. Obviously, the game on Thursday night you could argue is a a Kenny free hit. Really, there's no expectation there, and there'll still be a brilliant support that goes down. And they'll get behind the team because they always do. The high bees, you know, they travel in big numbers. So it's uh, listen. It's I've got a brilliant training centre, a brilliant stadium. Um, no matter what side of the fence you sit on, whether it comes to Hibs and Hearts, you could argue that one of the top kind of four or five clubs in the country. Um, so it's I'm pretty sure a lot of people that are even in jobs and doing well, will, will look at the high bees job and think they would love to have it. Um, so I don't think they'll be shy in having plenty of admirers that will be putting their name in the ring. I just think that. Um, it's an easy thing for us pundits, for, for media outlets, just to look at the, the the old names that always seem to pop up for every job. And the harsh reality is that they, they sometimes always end up finding a job. But And that's not me driving my agenda or like what I look at. I just think that it's um, regardless of the name, and that's why I'm taking the name out of the equation, really. It has to be somebody that could be a right fit for one club, but no the right fit for another. And I think there's a, a certain identity going back to a Tony Mowbray type era that, that there's a right fit for, for Hibs to get the club back to what the expectation would be within um, and I think they did need now with the club being as as, as low as it is at sitting bottom of the league and, and the disappointment obviously the Villa game etc albeit a million miles apart 
um, you know, fans crying out for some excitement and the previous manager being well back, I think, what, 1.2, 1.3 million on two attacking players, it's never really been heard of. And I know things change and it's brilliant that the club have got the investment there to, to put into the playing squad. But I think you you need to look past names and, and, and individuals who are doing maybe well somewhere else. That, that For me, for Hibs, as I, speaking as a fan really and, and someone that's got an opinion on what I think is right is, I think the, the, the fit has to be someone that's got the, the, the right type of ideas for a club like Hibs. So do you think the players are there to get that third or fourth place finish under a new manager? I think there's a good squad there. I think it's, uh, I, I think that I, I see a lot of Hibs fans talking about the defensive frailties and it's never been addressed and X, Y and Z. And point, listen, the natural thing for a fan or, or for, for any of us people involved in football is to point the finger at individuals and, and get a wee bit irate and a wee bit annoyed when you didn't get a result um, and things are not going too well. That's just the nature of the beast, really. But what I would say is they've got a squad there that's more than capable. Um, I think Hibs fans would be probably a, a bit heaved and a bit disappointed at the expectation of just finishing top six every year. I think they want more, whether than the title to get more. I, I, listen, that's a different argument. But I would say that um, they've got a squad there that's more than capable of finishing in the top six. The, the, the hard part for, for Scottish football and I suppose for us individual managers and coaches that are involved in, in football is that there's always one of the big ones that has a disappointment. And you, you've seen that obviously last year in Aberdeen and Hart sacking their managers. Lee Johnson was well backed. He, he, you know, he finished behind um, Hearts and Aberdeen who lost their managers and he, and he retained his job. And this 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 year he's obviously been the, the first to fall. So I just think that there's a squad there that's more than capable. It just needs the right fit and the right person. And I think um, the, the the scary thing, I suppose, for the monetary people behind the the scenes at Easter Road is a new manager comes in with a different style for, for Lee Johnson, a different idea for, for previous managers, different recruitment people come in, different staff in different ways. And it becomes a, a vicious circle at times if you don't get it right because players are on too long contracts, they get paid too much money, they're hard to shift on. Um, so sometimes, you know, sacking a manager is not just sacking a manager, it's is how does the squad then look for the for the next person that comes in? Is he aligned with with any th- same thoughts as Lee Johnson, or is it a total different regime? Is it a total different idea? Is it a different profile of player? So it's going to be interesting to see how they how they go about things. Are you going to throw your hat in the ring for it? I say, I, I, everybody knows I'm available, and I'm listening. To, the hard part for me is. Um, the, the next stage for Kelty was, in my opinion, was the the full time gig that that could have been anywhere. Listen, so some people go straight into a full time gig and um and and start in the Premier League or or start here. I chose my path because it's what I believe was right for me. The person that maybe doesn't like what what I do or me as an individual would maybe say that I've done the wrong thing. I just got to back what I believe in really, and I've always lived my life on being humble and respectful. I done the academy route because I thought. It was the right route for me to learn my trade and, and and do the hard yards and the hours and and learn what I was going to be good at and what I wasn't so good at. And if I wasn't so good at some things, could I then learn in an environment like an academy where under 13s, 15s, 18s, it might give me a bit more time, a bit more patience. And and that's what I did. It's, it's not to say that I think I'm any better than anyone else, but at the same time, I probably was one of few that would, would run the risk of leaving Rangers B team in a full-time gig to, to take a part-time gig in, in League 2, but I did. Because it was an opportunity, I thought it was right. So, I, listen, I'm I'm forward thinking and I'm and I'm a thinker. That's the way I've always been, really, as an individual. And um, when the next opportunity comes, when it does come, if it does come, then I'll I'll be ready to try and give my all to it. So that's a yes then. So I'm, I'm interested in any job, really. Um, any job, any job. It's it's whether people send me an email to hire me at the academy or whether you use guys ask me if I want to come on the BBC. I'm I'm always ready to to, to do stuff if I can and. Um, put myself out there really and listen, I would work every minute every day if I could Kevin listen thank you so much for joining us an absolute gentleman that's all for today folks you've been listening to the Scottish Football Podcast from BBC Scotland with me David Curry and our special guest Kevin Thompson there will be another podcast tomorrow and you can keep up to date with all the football news on the BBC Scotland website thanks for listening and take care the Scottish Football Podcast from BBC Radio Scotland 